craft everything. Hi everyone, my name is Tasha, and today we'll be learning to craft journals and notebooks. For this project, you'll need sticker paper, glossy or matte, bookends, which are optional to the project, binding wire or binding coil, pliers, unhold notebook paper. You can also use plain paper from the printer and chipboard. You'll also need, of course, a binding machine. Up next, I'm gonna show you how to craft the background for your cover. Go into Canva, my favorite program, click on US letter document, go to the left-hand side of the screen and select a background of your choice. You can pre-design and upload one or use one of the ones already crafted from Canva. From this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and use one crafted by Canva. I'm choosing to add this beautiful doll to my project, cropping her in half and making her big enough to stretch the entire notebook without taking her over the edge. I'm centering her in the middle of the project. The purple line confirms that it is centered exactly where I want it. Going over to the right hand side of the screen where it says share. And I'm going to download this project. For this purpose, I'm gonna to choose to use a PNG, but as you can see, there are other options. PDF is also an option that you can use, but my personal preference is the PNG. That's downloading to the computer. As you can see, it has already opened, so I'm gonna go up to File and Print, sending it to the printer of my choice. In this case, I don't like the border on the side of that um, notebook, so I'm gonna choose to make it borderless by updating the settings for my print. This of course is personal preference and you can make the choice to change it or leave it based on what you like. I'm gonna go ahead and send this to the printer. While my project is printing, I'm gonna go grab the material needed for this part of the project. Let's go. For this portion of the project, you'll need as many pages as you'd like to add to your journal or notebook, lined or unlined. Stack your papers together in groups of 10 or 12, but no more than 12, depending on how thick your papers are. Press them inside of the mouth of your binding machine. Take the lever that's up and pull it down. Lift and get back up, holding your pages, and pull out the ruler on the left-hand side of the machine. Pull the paper out and down to the end of the ruler, Press the white button on the left hand side of the machine and pull out number 10 on the number grid. Pull the lever of the machine down, lifting it back up while holding your paper, pushing up the button on the left hand side and pressing in the number 10. As you can see, your paper has been perfectly holed going down the side of the paper. Put that to the side and grab your second set of 10 or 12 sheets. You may be able to do more or less depending on how thick the paper is. Stack it together, press it inside of the mouth of your machine on the end and pull your lever down. I like to make sure that all of the numbers on the number grid are all pressed in to make sure it punches correctly. Pull the lever down, pull out the ruler on the left hand side, pulling the paper out and pushing it down to the end of the ruler and pressing down the white button on the left-hand side of the machine. Pull out the lever 10 again, and pull down the lever on the top of the machine. Lift it up, 
push up the button and push in the number 10 and you have your second set of papers done. If you mess up, that's okay. I did a couple of times before I got it right. You would rinse and repeat this process until all of your pages are punched, making sure that when you slide the paper into the machine originally for the first punch, that you press it all the way to the end of the ruler. Do not pull the ruler out of the machine until you get to the second step of pressing. Repeat this process as many times as you need to, to punch holes in all of the sheets that you're wanting to add to your binding coil. Keep in mind that the number of sheets that you can put inside of your binding coil depends on how thick that particular binding wire is. So be sure to pick a wire that's thick enough to hold as many sheets as you'd like to add. Take your chipboard and printed sticker paper and lay it on a flat surface. Flip the sticker paper over, back side up, and take the corner of the paper and begin to peel it down. Peel it about an inch down on the back side, leaving a crease across the layer on the back. This will help you center the paper on your chipboard. Flip your sticker paper over to the other side, lining it up on the left corner and making sure it is symmetrical to the right corner. Press the paper down, lift it up slightly and pull kind of like a tab from the back. Make sure you press as you pull to make sure there are no air bubbles at the bottom. Pull out your binding machine, unlatching the side hook, releasing the lever on the left hand side of the machine. Stack the front and back cover just as you did with the paper sheet. And slide it into the mouth of the machine. Make sure there are no numbers on the number grid that are pulled out. Pull the handle down and back up Slide the paper out and to the left while pulling out your ruler. Be sure to slide your covers all the way down as far as the ruler will go, pressing the white button on the left side and pulling out the number 10 on the number grid. Pull down the lever and pull it back up, releasing the white button on the left side of the machine and pressing in the number 10. 
As you can see here, all of your holes have successfully been punched in your covers. Count the number of holes in your paper or notebook cover. For me, there is a total of 21. Count the same number of prongs on your binding wire and use the pliers to snip any additional. Take the binding wire and place the round side into the front of your notebook cover and attach all of the paper. Now attach the back cover. Be sure to spin the binding wire all the way around through the back of the cover. Make sure you can see the round side out. It should look like an open smile. Grab your binding machine and turn it backwards. Make sure the lever is up. Take your notebook and press it firmly against the back of your machine. There is a dial on top of the machine that indicates the thickness of the wire you've chosen to use. Be sure to check your box or package to determine what size the binding wire is. Adjust the knob on the machine until you get it to the appropriate size of the binding wire by turning it in a circle. Once you've selected the appropriate size, make sure that your notebook is pressed firmly against the back of the machine and hold it steady. Take the lever that is usually in the front and press it down. This will close your notebook. Scoot your notebook to the left and continue doing this until the notebook is completely closed. You can tell that you've done this correctly because it will be in the shape of a circle. So instead of being an open smile, it will look like a closed circle. Take any embellishments or any optional items that you choose to add, such as bookends, and add them to the corner of your book. And voila, you're done. Isn't it cute? This is the quickest, easiest way to make a journal, planner, or a notebook. But wait, I have an announcement for you guys. On November 5th and November 12th at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be teaching live classes on how to create acrylic Christmas ornaments. Stop by our group on Facebook, Brown Girls Craft and Create with Cricut Mug Press and Sublimation to get additional information. We'd love to have you. And stay tuned to the end of this video if you'd like additional information about the classes. Save $10 with the promo code iCraftYouTube. Stop by, we'd love to meet each and every one of you in person. Oh, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel. Thank you so much for stopping by to craft everything with me. I really enjoyed you guys. Bye!